to our show this morning. Uh, welcome, John Case. Uh, Anita's not with us this morning. And good morning, Rosanna. And uh, good morning. Scott, Scott. Good morning. Uh, a lot to talk about this week. Uh, UAW strike is continuing. They may expand the number of uh, workplaces that they are, are, are going to strike this morning. We were listening in. They were supposed to make an announcement at 10, but the uh, stream didn't start uh, before we started our show. So we'll have to check in later and see what's going on on the front line with the auto workers. Um, also, it looks like the government's going to shut down tomorrow uh, at midnight for the first time since 2018. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that and what that represents. And then uh, another big development in the class struggle with the victory of the writers uh, and producers of our uh, evening and daytime television movies and so on and so forth. And then finally, a very, very important point of international solidarity with the people of Cuba. But let's start with uh, the UAW in Detroit. Rosanna, history was made. Mr. Biden, President Biden showed up on the picket line. Were you surprised, Rosanna? <clears throat> Actually, to some degree, yes. But, uh, you know, the, the race is getting pretty hot, so... Um, I think he's trying to show that he is a, you know, the working people's uh, president. <clears throat> so uh, I think, you know, he was out there, which is good. You know, it's a, it's a good publicity, good support for, for workers, uh, not just throughout the country, but throughout the world. So um, I think overall, it's a good, it's a good move. Scott, I was shocked. I almost fell out of my seat. It was a good thing I was sitting down, <laughs> but I heard the ground shake. I was like, "Whoa, this is this is deep." What uh, do you think led up to it, Scott? Was it the fact that Trump was coming in the next day, or were there other factors? I mean, that was a factor. A lot of it is, you know, just about uh, optics and and positioning, and you know, respect to the the presidential race, um, but. I think there's also deeper underlying factors um, that, uh, in a sense, compelled Biden to do this. Um, the the class struggle we keep saying it is heating up. Um, the the ground is shaking. Not just you know not from from Joe Biden stepping off of Air Force One onto the picket line, but rumbling from within. Right. Um, the the contradictions are increasing. Um, Militancy is increasing, class consciousness is increasing, and um, that created a situation where the the right place for him to be uh, was was there. Um, so I think we have to really give um, the UAW credit uh, for um, you know compelling him to uh, to take that stand, um, and also. Um, really just look at the pathetic show that Donald Trump put on, um, you know, holding a rally claiming to support um, union auto workers, but holding it at a non-union plant uh, with people pretending uh, to be union, holding signs saying union members for Trump who weren't union members, uh, people claiming to be auto workers who weren't. It just, you know, you, you see the whole sort of superficiality and bankruptcy of of the right wing uh, attempt to pander uh, to working class people. Uh, John Case, Scott yeah. said that me falling out of my seat was the earthquake shaking in the class struggle taking place around the country and not my embarrassment at, at, at having been so cynical and, and not believing that uh, Mr. Biden would show up. Uh, what's your take? Uh, uh, was it how? How do you account for the first time a U.S. president? Were we wrong, uh, or uh, about the political trajectory of this administration, or or is it? I think uh, a combination well, of factors. 
Uh, yeah, I think it's a couple of streams in the um, recent history, the recent path of the class struggle that's at work here. Um, you know, one is that Trump uh, split the working class to win his first election, and um, it remains somewhat divided, you know, along uh, very serious lines. And I think that uh, Biden made a correct decision that you have to have the working class to, to sustain, have a sustainable win at the presidency. And he made some important uh, moves in the beginning of his administration, the, the PRO Act, a number of other things, uh, a good NLRB. And the labor movement responded at its top leadership with a complete, early, commit, full commitment to his presidential campaign. And I think that, uh, that I thought that that was really, that was a little unusual and not everybody in the labor movement was a hundred percent pleased with that, about that. But when I saw him appoint Jared Bernstein as his chief uh, economist, who's as pro labor economist as there is in the United States um, and as skilled a one as there is in the United States, I, I thought this is uh, pretty serious stuff. And uh, so I wasn't surprised. I was delighted that he showed up at the picket line. I wasn't entirely surprised. I wasn't sure, you know, you, I, when I heard that Jamie Dimon was traveling to Detroit too, representing all of the capital interests involved in the auto situation. Um, you know, I was a little, I was wondering about what, whether you're gonna have a collision plus with Trump coming too. Um, but I'm glad he did. And um, it, uh, it, it, it certainly, puts the a little an extra iron in the fire a big iron and then the fire that uh is going to force the uh automakers to um be pragmatic you can't do this without workers you can't do it without workers and you might not be able to do it without a democratic dispensation in the country and that's another thing that's at stake here you know it's not just the working class that's split the whole goddamn country is split, and and uh, the middle class is split, and there's sections of the ruling class that are split. I mean, it's true. Sections of the ruling class are split, and I think that you know, this is an extraordinary moment we're living in, Rosanna. It's a really extraordinary uh, moment, and. And and sometimes during extraordinary moments, uh, you're forced to do things that are independent of your will. You know, you you, you remember that phrase from from Marx: independent of your you know your 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 subject to the, the the powers, and 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 whatever is in Biden's head or or Jared Bernstein's head or Kamala Harris's head or Chuck Schumer, I mean, they're compelled by the reality of what's taking place to do things that they might not have done yesterday. I, know? I think it's 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 a testimony to the power of the people. You know, when people rise up and and demand what's the fair share, their fair share, and unite around it. You know, things get done that that really represent workers. You know, um, what's good for the worker, the being able to meet their basic needs and and have a livable wage and all these kinds of things. So when workers understand their power overall and the importance of unity, this is I think what we're seeing right now is 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 that kind of um, <clears throat> response by elected officials and Biden and. You know, Biden wouldn't be doing these kinds of things had not, uh, I believe it was the auto worker, um, the head of the auto worker says that they were not going to endorse Biden at the beginning, or it might have been one of the others, I can't remember, but <clears throat> they were at, they were upset with him. So I think he realized, hey, I need the labor movement behind me, otherwise I'm not going to get reelected. So I think understanding our power as people, as working people, is key to to really demanding and getting what we what we deserve and what we need. What we what we the wealth that we built, we're not we're not getting our fair share. 
You're right. It was the UAW which didn't endorse, and they still haven't. You know, and they 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 said, you know, you want us to endorse, you know, step through the plate, do the right thing, you know, and and uh, and they're concerned about the electric vehicles being built in non-union states and non-union plants, and and uh, they're they're they they want more, and that was probably part of the bargain as uh, well. But, but, but Scott, there's a, a increasingly deepening crisis in the country and saying that it's split is not enough. The, the, the big issue is how to unite the uh, people and the class and, and around what issues. And the, the uh, far mega right uh, are playing a dastardly role. And you saw Trump was in Detroit Right outside of Detroit, at that, as you pointed out, at that non-union shop, and and there were reports in the newspaper. They had a one person holding up a sign that says, "I'm a UAW worker," and they approached the reporter, "Oh, I'm really not uh, a member of the UAW." Wow. Another one had a sign saying, "I'm an auto worker," and they said, "Well, where do you work?" Well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> And both of them refused to to uh, give their uh, names, but 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 at, in that speech, uh, I I think Trump and in other places, Trump urged the MAGA right to shut it down. They said shut it down, shut the government, and it looks like that's going to happen at midnight tomorrow. Um. Uh. Last time, Scott, that happened was in 2018. The government was shut down for 34 days. Uh, and, 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 and they say the issue is the uh, border funding and Ukraine. Or is it uh, the Speaker of the House's job? Is that the main, is that the main issue, in your opinion? Yeah. I want to go back to this, uh, to the, the Donald Trump thing, because I, I really have trouble letting that one go. Like in that speech at that, you know, non-union auto plant, he spoke to auto workers and said, just get um, your union to endorse me and I'll take care of the rest. And that is such a characteristic um, uh, trait of the, the, the fascist leaning right, right? Um, you sow these crises. Um, you you shut down everything you can. You you um, you know block things, obstruct things, and then um, you say, "Oh, come to me. I'll fix it. I'm the only one that can fix it." And I think we have to you know put that side by side with Rosanna's point um, that you know Biden's presence at the picket line reflected the power of the people, and and those are the two different visions that we're dealing with right now. Um, one that says um, you know, let's put our faith in a billionaire to fix things. And another one that says, um, you know, the working class and the people and the democratic movement um, can fix things. This government shutdown, um, you know, anybody who is even vaguely tempted by that, you know, nonsense about, oh, big government is the problem, whatever, whatever. Uh, take a look at what happens uh, when, it shut, when it shuts down. Um, you know, social security applications not being pro, uh, uh, processed, um, aid to uh, like f um, food aid for for women with infants uh, not being not being paid out. Um, this is a, a government shutdown is a catastrophe, and the pledge last time around from Republicans in exchange for the concessions that that Biden made when he agreed to come to the bargaining table with them uh, was that there would not be any more of these, and now. Um, it's another round. It just shows uh, that at every level, on every issue, the Republican Party uh, has announced its decision to use, like, scorched earth terror tactics, basically, to um, not even to get what it wants, because all it wants is to, to cause trouble. That's uh, cause trouble and, and make things easier for the, for the ruling class. John, uh, is it, I mean, this shit is getting deep, man. And is it <laughs> the case that the ruling class, you know, they, the Marx, Marx and Engels, Lenin and Rosa Luxemburg and Claire Zetgen and those 
those guys and women. There were two conditions for a revolutionary situation. One is that the ruling class cannot rule in the old way. Uh, right. and, and, and the second is that the people are not willing to be ruled in the old way. Now, the second is but not there, not even close. But is it the case that the first is making itself felt that, that these government shutdowns and the crisis that we're facing or many different levels uh, are symptomatic of a very deep, deeper crisis in, in governance in the capitalist state. Is, I, I think opinion? that, uh, yes. But I think that the, uh, you notice that we're having the, they're picking the military budget to have the showdown over uh, this time, which is a first, I think. Um, and uh, I got to tell you that uh, when I think about the, the two biggest dangers to the collapse of our country or in stages or all at once or apocalyptically or just gradually, I think about uh, one, the, the, rep the danger that Trump represents and the fascist movement uh, to destabilize and use destabilization to seize power. Um, and the other is Cold War II, um, which is raising costs across the country, the world. I mean, right now, biggest problems you have in inflation and in development are geopolitics. You know, in other words, the Sino-US conflict and the war in Ukraine. You know, and we're headed down a road of greater and greater global destabilization, and that's going to raise prices and costs big time. Uh, so, you know, imperialism is one chasm, and Trump is another, and they're kind of related in different ways. But you're right; uh, we're reaching that situation where dysfunction is taking over function. And that's uh, the first condition of revolutionary ideas and movements gaining ground, actually, because what else can you do if it's falling, if the sky is falling, you have to start taking care of yourselves and each other. Uh, Rosanna, John Case is saying, we're not chicken little. We're not like the sky is falling, the sky is falling, you know, it's actually falling. And 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 this government shutdown is 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 going to result in uh, you know the military families are not going to be paid. You're a move, you're part of that movement. Aren't the military families against the war? Uh, there's going to be halts in water and food inspection, uh, slash in nutrition aid as a result, canceling cancer research. Uh, delays in, they just had the terrible hurricanes in Florida or Puerto Rico. No more money, y'all. And ain't nobody, even Trump won't be going down there throwing, you know, uh, paper towels at the crowd. Um, He's going to hand out individual <laughs> ones this time. <laughs> Napkins, pieces of toilet paper, maybe. I mean, this is some serious stuff that's... Uh, and 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 it's just deepening the uh, a crisis, uh, and uh, which makes next November's election even more important, doesn't it? <clears throat> Most definitely, I think that that's the you know things may seem like gloom and doom, but but there's a way out. There really is a way out. Once again, it's uniting, and and people have to turn out to vote. We have the numbers. We just have to turn out to vote. We have to get our family members to turn out to vote. We have to change the, the, you know, the legislature. We have to change all of these things in order to get what we need. Uh, and we have the numbers, but you know, we've got to organize and, and come together and, and uh, unite. And you know, the, the hypocrisy of the Republicans to say that they are for family values and humanity and all of these kinds of things but they're gonna allow children to go hungry or, and or homeless. They're gonna allow uh, uh, elderly to, to also you know, go hungry and or homeless. They're going to allow all of these um, tragedies to happen to humans because you know, they're not getting their way, which is like very childish tantrum in my opinion. 
So, it, you know, I think we, we have to recognize that there's only a few of those Republicans that are pushing that. And we got to get them out. And the only way we can get them out is through the ballot. And we have to, and we have to, uh, you know, pressure, pressure them if we live in their, in their areas, as well as other Republicans to stand up against them and move forward. Because if you're really for family values, you cannot allow this to shut down. Now, you know, they're going to be raised a thin margin, Scott, in some of these states, you know, <clears throat> Florida, you know, uh, Ohio, Michigan, Wisconsin, and, and in each of them, there have been some very important elections taking place this year, like in Wisconsin for that uh, Supreme Court judge, where she defeated the mega, her mega opponent, 11 points, she blew that boy out. It wasn't even close, no competition. Then you had an election in Chicago with Brandon Johnson and, um, uh, and then the mayor in Florida. I keep forgetting the name of the, the uh, city. In any event, Jacksonville. I saw in, Scott, I saw in the press the other day, Ralph Nader himself, who helped throw the election <laughs> with, uh, George Bush, George W. Bush, was it G.W. Bush? Yeah. Yeah. He's saying, I want to come and support democracy this time around because even I'm afraid of the fascist danger. That's kind of a wake up call to a section of, of, of the left. Scott, will they listen? Well, one would, one would hope so. Um, and I think that this, this nonsense of, um, well, you know, the Democrats are really bad on this and their foreign policy, whatever, whatever. Um, it's, yeah, it's true. The foreign policy is awful. Uh, it requires a huge amount of pressure, it requires a huge movement. We are not gonna get there with Donald Trump in the White House. We are not gonna get there with the GOP in control of either House of Congress. Um, uh, so that's kind of a, a non-starter for me. Like this, electing, changing the composition of the legislature, you know, making sure Trump doesn't get into the White House, those aren't the end of the movement. Those aren't the goals of the movement. That, that is a necessary step to make sure that we can uh, keep moving forward, to make sure that, um, you know, this uh, strike upsurge can continue. Uh, because I can guarantee you that if, you know, if a Republican is elected president, there is going to be a massive crackdown uh, on, on the labor movement. Um, so again, it's, it's democracy. We keep saying, and, and, and we say it all the time and it starts to sound, you know, exaggerated or whatever, but democracy really is at stake. Um, our ability to come together uh, as a class, first of all, and as a, as a people, uh, in favor of democracy is at stake. And, and we have to, we have to fight for that. We can't, you know, give any ground to either, you know, uh, the, the throwing up your hands in despair or the, you know, um, pox on both your houses or, or any of that uh, nonsense. Voting is a collective action that, that we can take um, the, the, the first, really the first step, right? You know, we fight fascism at the ballot box so we don't have to fight it elsewhere later. Um. John Case, they're even trying to take the vote away from disabled people. It's part of their voter suppression efforts. <laughs> it's a new uh, front in the fight to suppress the vote against the disabled. And, and Trump is becoming increasingly violent in his rhetoric. He says he wants to, he accused the former head of the Joint Chiefs of treason. What was his name? Mealy? Mm -hmm. He said, right. huh? And, right, because he wouldn't support the uh, coup. Right. He wouldn't support the coup. So he needs to be executed. Right. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Not like that, you know? And, How and many people in the United States? Huh? 
How many people in the United States do you think have a personal list of people that should be executed? I mean, uh, I think it's a, a big number, actually. So, I mean, I, when people say things like that, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's ridiculous. I, I don't know. I think we need to clarify what democracy means. Um, because uh, I think working people need a whole lot more democracy. And I think the billionaires need a whole lot less, substantially less. And, um, and I, and I, I, so I think when people throw around the term democracy all the time and, and um, we see Trump as the emblem of uh, that, but I mean, uh, we've been under the rule of giant corporations for my whole life. And, um, uh, and their concentrated wealth has increased every single year. Okay. Uh, but good times and bad times, if, despite all the reforms. So I think, um, y you know, we got to be, if we're going to make it credible to people, because there's a lot of folks that think that uh, voting uh, brings them nothing. I'm really a lot. I mean, we run into that in the labor movement all the time, exhorting people to vote. And uh, sometimes we we have an impact. We make it better. But there's a pretty, pretty powerful, apolitical, cynical trend uh, that I see, especially in here in West Virginia. I, I don't, maybe I, I'm talking to the wrong people, <laughs> but it's pretty widespread. Well, it's all over. And, and it's the many manifest, not just in national or state or local. Even in the UAW election, I think 16% of the membership <clears throat> voted in that in that election, you know, and you see what That's a right. difference having a militant uh, class struggle oriented leadership has in shaping the direction of not only that particular struggle, but potentially the labor movement as a whole. But you're right, we have to redefine the debate for democracy and one of and there, I keep saying it needs to be radical reforms of the whole uh, uh, political and economic process, and 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 there's some modest reforms that that ain't even all that radical that would go in that direction, like taking the money out of politics, having public funding of campaigns. That's not that radical. That's common goddamn sense, Rosanna. And and but you you have to begin somewhere, and that's certainly a a place to be uh, again. But I'm increasingly optimistic. The, the Writers Guild um, on Wednesday, they they uh, just settled with the company after a second longest strike. They were out for 146 days. That's something to celebrate, Rosanna. Well, most definitely. I think, you know, once again, it proves the power of the people, you know, and the militancy and you, and it gives, it gives you a, a clear understanding that together you can win the, the, the demands that you, you know, that meet your needs. We saw it in UPS. <clears throat> We're seeing it uh, with the, with the writers. Uh, we've seen it in other, in other uh, labor strikes and labor efforts. So I think, you know, it's, what, what, what we're talking about is something that is very doable, that even history has shown us that is doable, even though it may seem gloom and doom. And just like Scott said, there are steps, necessary steps to move forward. It's not going to happen overnight. And, and, the prop, and understanding that the propaganda is very thick. This is why there are people who are very apathetic about voting and they feel that it doesn't make a difference, but we know that it does make a difference. Our analysis tells us that it does make a difference. And so we have to help people understand that what they're being fed is a bunch of propaganda to keep them from voting, to keep them from uh, uh, understanding that they're, they, they can, that change is possible uh, as long as they participate in, in it. Don't pay attention to these polls. The only poll that matters is when people come out to vote. And in almost every single election, Scott, in uh, 2023, not all of them, but in most of them, uh, the MAGA right was pushed back. And, 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 and that's really important. And you combine that with what's happening on the ground in the class struggle, and you uh, 
you know, combine that with what happened in New York two weeks ago with the climate change march, something really dramatic and fundamental is happening in the country that, that, that's pushing back to right and pushing forward uh, a movement that is, if we work at it right, capable of bringing about real change. Scott. Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, I think one of the things that distinguishes our party from from some other left forces is um, that we really reject the kind of elitist idea that the American people are, you know, backward, brainwashed, too stupid to understand this or that. Um, we've, you know, generally insisted that um, overall, in their majority, um, the the people are not only uh, sensible, but um, but actually democratic minded, democratically oriented, and um, you know, we emphasize the ability of people to come together and struggle together and and win and take power, right? So um, yeah, and and that's a really really important point um, to to get across uh, that um, the these put this pushback against the MAGA right. Um, the American people are not stupid. Um, I think by and large people are, are fed up with the MAGA right and also fed up with the forces um, in the, the, the liberal bourgeoisie in the media, whatever, that seem to just be intent on creating room uh, for the MAGA right um, and are, you know, and are pushing back. And on the WGA uh, strike, one of the things that, that I'm really excited about is, you know, we always talk about like working class art, working class culture, and that doesn't just mean culture that's on a, a working class theme or, you know, stuff that happens in the workplace. It's also art and culture produced under the, the leadership of the working class. So I think these these Hollywood strikes, the, the writers and the, you know, and SAG-AFTRA are, are going to have you know, big impacts on the whole field of cultural production and really advance, um, you know, bring bring a new focus on working class culture. That's what I, uh, that's what I hope anyway. Let's have a 1932.0 cultural revolution <laughs> that puts forward <laughs> democratic, working class, pro-people, pro-black, pro-Latino, pro-women, pro-LGBTQ, pro-Asian culture to the forefront. That's that's what we need. And in the course of it, we've got to uphold the banner of peace and international solidarity. Peace and international solidarity. And we're going to be doing that at our peace conference November 11th and 12th here in New York City. So clubs, members, districts of the party, Please select your delegates, fill out the form, send it in. It's going to be one hell of a conference. And, and, and we're going to be doing some singing at that conference too. There may be some acting and maybe some poetry <laughs> reading. It's going to be a wonderful affair, but we have to raise the banner, changing the foreign policy of our country. And John Case had, had it right. It's not just a crisis of domestic government it's a international crisis with respect to the governance of of the planet and trade and it's a crisis of western imperialism of the uh, eu of the united states of japan uh, and some of the other asian countries and so we gotta be on top of that as as well but on the front line of this fight is cuba and, and, and there's a national campaign to let Cuba live by, uh, we want to encourage everybody to, there's a petition going around and trying to get a million signatures to take Cuba off of the terrorism list. It's U.S. imperialism that's import, exporting state terror, not Cuba, no evidence of that. We need to let Cuba breathe. And, 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 and one of the first steps in that regard is the uh, 
getting them off of the terrorism list so that trade can take place. And by the way, there was a terrorist bombing of the Cuban embassy just last week in Washington, D.C. We condemn it. It's wrong. They need to find out who did it and, and, and bring them to uh, uh, justice. This right wing terrorism has to end. Well, thank you very much for listening. That's our program this morning. John, thanks for coming in. Pinch hitting thank for, for, for uh, Anita. And we'll be back next week with another edition of Good Morning Revolution. Until then, stay strong, stay safe, and whatever you do, stay in the fight. Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.